So in this video, I'm going to share with you a simple action plan to grow your business. Let's get started. So first of all, a lot of you I notice, well, I, I should say in the conversations I've had, there are a lot of things that you do in your business um, that doesn't necessarily grow it. Uh, it might be providing some foundation, like you're kind of getting things ready, you're you know, figuring out your scheduling or your, you know, you're, you're working on your, your office chair or whatever, whatever it may be. Um, but let me give you some questions to guide your daily and weekly actions. And really, I'm going to share, I'm, I'm going to share in terms of the week because, uh, I, you know, you might do uh, things on different days than, uh, than I do. So here are four questions to help you guide a weekly action plan to grow your authentic business. The first question is, what is your content creation rhythm? That is, to me, the most important question. And if you don't answer that question, you will continue to procrastinate about building your audience because without creating content, how do you build an audience? I, Please tell me how, <laughs> actually, I would be curious if you're trying to build an audience in a way other than creating content. Um, yeah, you can build an audience through selling and affiliate marketing and joint ventures, et cetera. But to really build an authentic and loyal audience who loves you as you are and over time, your selling becomes so easy if you would only commit to creating content regularly. And as an example, I just, announced my group program, my client group uh, coaching pro group coaching program for, for the next year. And by the time I announced it, I, I had scheduled to announce it, uh, what was it last, I think it was last, um, uh, or actually just a few days ago on, on Tuesday. And I'd scheduled to announce it. And by the time I scheduled to announce it, it was already filled. Why? I think largely because I've been creating content consistently. It has never th been this easy to fill my group programs. And I've been around for, in my business, I've been around for about 10 years, you know, working various parts of my business, launched it about 10 years ago. And I always had to work so hard to launch uh, my, my group programs. And this year, something shifted. And I think it's because of three years doing three years of consistent content creation because I started consistent content in 20, middle of 2015. I noticed that by the middle of 2016, I had a full one-on-one -on -one client load and no longer I, and then I hadn't been reaching out for clients for several months already. So within a year, um, it made a significant difference in my one-to-one -one client load. It's full. 2017, of course, since 2016, I haven't had to email my list to say, hey, will any of you please sign up to be my clients? Or, hey, I've got room. I haven't had to do, if you look at my emails past several years, I haven't asked people to become my clients. So it's been since two years. Okay, so anyway, a year after I started consistent content, my client load was full. And now three years after I started consistent content, my group programs are full uh, in terms of my group coaching programs that I launch once a year are full without needing to, to launch. So that's pretty amazing. And now I'm not saying that, well, George said it's one year and three years, so that's going to, no, I mean, it could happen for you in three months and it could happen for you in three years. I don't know what your timing is going to be, but I do know based on my own experience and based on watching lots of clients do this, that it works. Now, if you create consistent content, so that you'll get clients, your audience is going to sense that. And it's going to come across as probably a bit more salesy than, than you actually are. So I always recommend that you create consistent content because you care about your audience and because you care about your own growth. If you do it out of love rather than out of money and the need for money, Okay, and really, that's the sort of the one of the secrets to a true livelihood, right? Livelihood is doing it for love rather than money, right? So if you do it for love, as much as we can, you know, I still do a lot of things for money, so uh, it's true. I'm not perfect 
by any means, stretch of the imagination, and certainly not in right livelihood. I still work with clients because they pay me. I still run my group program because they pay me. I still create my online courses because you all pay me. So I'm still motivated by money, so I'm not perfect yet. Uh, one day, maybe I will be. But, um, but still, in, at least I carve out my content is not money-based. You know, at least I, you know, I have some things that I do for money, <laughs> okay? And then, and then as much as I can, over time, I'm going to try to expand the spheres of my business where I don't do it for money. But right now, I still need to do some things for money. And then at least the content I could do as a ministry. So that's, and that's probably something all of us can do. And really, I think all of us should do. It's actually smarter business-wise to do the content without thought of money, right? It's actually ironically more strategic business-wise. But anyway, um, that's the first question I have for you is, what is your content rhythm? What is it? And chat below, comment below, let me know, let us know, if you want, if you want to, what is your rhythm of content creation? And so if you follow me, you know my rhythm of content creation. You just have to look on my Facebook business page and you just see what my rhythm is. But let me just kind of outline for you so you can kind of get a sense of what that is um, without having to figure it out by looking at it. So I now I create, well, let, let me actually start with when I started in 2015 with consistent content, what was my rhythm then? And then what is it now? So that you can think about how you want to start uh, as well. So when I started, I committed to doing videos every single day. Five, well, I took Saturdays and Sundays off, so I did five videos a week. And that was starting in May of 2015. And when I, as I did the videos, I also realized that there are a lot of people like myself who don't necessarily like to watch people talking on video and would rather just quickly read what they said. So out of a sense of courtesy for the people who are like me, I said, okay, I'm just going to quickly tap out on my phone what I basically said in the video in case you don't want to watch it. So that's how I got started with writing because I had a writer's block all the way up until 2016. So I, I couldn't write. The only thing I could do was to think, okay, I'm just doing this for courtesy. I'm just doing it on my phone. Quickly, a few notes about what I basically said on, on video. If you don't want to read it, here's basically what I said. Not an award-winning essay, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy, nothing eloquent, just real quick, almost bullet point fashion, what I said in the video in case you, you want to watch it. Here's what I said, okay? And then over time, I practiced doing less bullet points and more sentences and more paragraphs until about 2016, 2017, I'm not sure when, I lost my writer's block. It was gone. And now I'm able to write. As you know, I write so much now, but I had 40 years of writer's block and yeah, because all my life I hated writing. I hate it, hate it, hated it. It wasn't until I practiced writing, I forced myself to write every day that I overcame my writer's block. So 2015, middle of 2015, I started consistent content, five new, uh, five new videos a week and five new blog posts a week, starting with just kind of bullet point type stuff. And then 2016, and I, I made it until I got to 100 videos and 100 blog posts. And then... Uh, I think this was late 2015, I then um, decreased my content rhythm to three new videos per week and three new blog posts per week. A blog post is basically kind of summarizing what I said in the video with additional thoughts sometimes. So 20, late 2015 through to uh, 2016, it was three, three new pieces of content, video and blog post per week. And then in 2017, sometime in 2017, I... I further uh, decreased that to two new videos and blog posts per week. And now in 2018, starting maybe in the middle of 2018, I've now reduced it to one new video and blog post per week. And that's the one you're watching right now. That's the Friday. The Friday one is my new one every week. And then my other, the other parts of my uh, rhythm are now, I'm just looking at my notes because I, I, I write everything down. And I try never to remember anything. And I always keep looking back on things because I've written it down. I don't do I use my brain for improvisation, for creativity, for uh, you know pattern recognition. I don't use my brain to remember things. That's another tip. I always write everything down. I try to refer. So here's my rhythm. New content, uh, blog post, video and blog post each Friday. On Mondays, I take a previously well-received blog post and I just put it on a Facebook status update. 
long, long status update you've seen it, just text only. On Tuesdays, I re-edit one of my previous blog posts and I make a, a new video uh, you know, on the topic of that old blog post. So that's Tuesdays. On Wednesdays, I re-edit an old blog post and I reshare it as a blog post. Okay, so, and then on Saturdays, um, not this week, but usually most Saturdays, I interview an, uh, one of my clients and have them share a business lesson that they've learned that can help you as well. And also have them share something from their expertise, teach you something from, from what they know. Um, okay, so that's the first question I have for you is what is your consistent content rhythm? All right, got it? First question, what is your consistent content rhythm? Knowing that it'll change over time, but you got to start with something and then let it evolve over time. So what is it? You can't just say, well, I make content when I'm inspired. I made a whole other video about that, why that's such a bad, not a bad, but it's, it's not effective as a strategy. I've seen so many people, I've had so many colleagues and friends who tell me, well, I just make content when I'm inspired. And they never do. <laughs> like they do it too few. The more content you make, the better you get at it. Okay. If you just do it when you're inspired, you learn very, you grow very slowly. That's why when I started, I did five a week because then I grew very fast. So if you want to grow fast, you do content every day. No questions asked, no excuses. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care. I don't, not that I don't care. I, of course I care if you're sick, but um, you shouldn't care if you're sick. Uh, you should take care of yourself and do content that day. That's it. There's one thing you do that day. You do content. Okay. Besides brushing your teeth, going to the bathroom and drinking water and getting lots of sleep. The other thing is content. Okay. <laughs> if you're sick, get lots of sleep, you know, drink water, drink warm water, and then do content. Those are the only three things you should be doing when you're sick. Okay. <laughs> that's it. All right. So that's the first question. What is your consistent content rhythm? because it helps you grow and helps other people grow and it grows your audience, grows your business, blah, 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 all that, all those benefits. The second question is, what is your content distribution plan? Because if you create content, but nobody's seeing it, well, very few people are able to create content without people seeing it and still feel encouraged to continue. There's very few people. I think, um, yeah, <laughs> some of you may, may have that discipline, but most of us don't. Um, so with my new business that I started in July, that some of you don't realize I started a new business in July. I only have two hours a week for that new business and it's about spiritual mentoring. I'm becoming a spiritual mentor through that new business. And what's my first step in that new business? Not cr figure out my, my scheduler software, not, you know, making sure my computer desktop is clean, not making sure all the, my certification is I don't have a certification in spirituality. I have no, I've not taken a single course in spirituality, but I'm going to call myself a spiritual mentor. Okay. I don't have a single certification that, did you know, I, I don't have a single certification in Facebook ads. I've not taken a class in content marketing. I've never taken a class in how to create courses or how to write a book or how to do any of the things that I have now created classes to teach you to do. I don't have a cert single certification in any of it. The only thing I have that's a certification is, I have an MBA, a master's in business, but let me promise you, pro I, mean, pro I promise you, nothing I learned from business school is what I'm teaching and doing today. I, it, business school is so useless. I'm so sorry to say, for those of you who I, I recruited into business school, because I was a recruiter for business school at, at one point. But uh, honestly, I think business school is, most business schools are useless for entrepreneurship. I, I, I learned about corporate management, corporate accounting, Nothing, learn nothing about how to start a business and how to do the stuff that I'm doing these days. So I learned nothing from my business school career. Uh, yes, one thing I learned is how to use spreadsheets. I, I practice using spreadsheets a lot, so that, that was helpful now. But <laughs> you can learn that without going to business school. So, um, so what is your content distribution plan? Uh, so j just to close that other comment, in my new business that I only have two hours a week for, all I don't even know what I'm going to sell. I don't have any offerings yet. I don't know what I'm, I don't know how I'm going to frame what I sell. All I'm doing right now is creating content and distributing it. So that's what I spend my two hours a week and my new business on. I don't even have a website. I don't even have a website for that new business, but I, I already have 2000, uh, Facebook engagers. So I, all I did was I created a new Facebook business page and I got started. 
no website, and I even changed my business name, uh, my brand name, in you know a, a month ago. So a few months in, I changed my branding because I realized it wasn't that great, and I might still change it. So I haven't figured out my brand. I haven't figured out anything. I just kind of got started with creating content two hours a week, distributing it through Facebook ads, and now I have about 2,000 people who have engaged with my content in the last 90 days. Uh, I counted by 90 days, but it's, I started in July. Um, so what is your content distribution plan? How are you getting people to see your content? Go ahead and comment below. I would love to know. Pause this video now and comment below um, on what your con how, how are you getting people to see your content? Okay, let, let me go ahead and share what I do um, in my current business. Uh, I should tell you what I, I told you what I do in my new business. I don't have a website. I don't have an email newsletter. I don't have anything except for a Facebook page, and I just run Facebook ads to new audiences. That's all I'm doing. For, for, that's my entire content distribution plan for my new business. Uh, I'm slowly working on creating a website. I'm going to have an email newsletter at some point. I'm going to have other social media channels, but Facebook is number one. And Facebook ads is number one. Okay, so with my current business, if you already have a business, if you already have a website, an email newsletter, here's what I do for my content distribution. One is I have a weekly email newsletter that shares my latest content. I hope you're getting my weekly email newsletter. If not, go to georgecow.com/email, georgecow.com/email, and there you can decide if you want to join my uh, weekly email newsletter or my monthly newsletter. Um, the, the weekly one basically shares my latest posts and my monthly one shares the best posts of the previous month. So that's simple. Um, and then besides weekly newsletter, uh, I do Facebook ads for this business as well, of course. I, I run uh, ads to cold audiences as well as warm audiences. I have an entire course on Facebook ads if you want to learn how to do that, how, how I do that, et cetera. Um, and the third, my con third piece of content distribution is um, I just post my my things to uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. I literally take five minutes a day, less three minutes a day. Whatever I post it to Facebook, I take an additional minute and a half to share it on Twitter, and an additional minute and a half to share it on LinkedIn. That's it. I spend three minutes a day on LinkedIn and Twitter combined. That's it. Um, okay, so that's the second question: is what is your content distribution plan? So again, first question: what is your Consistent content creation rhythm. Number one most important question. Number two is what is your content distribution plan? Okay, number two most important question. Now, number three most important question is what is your what is your launch plan? What is your plan for inviting your audience to work with you to buy your things? Let me know. And I, I think most of you watching this are probably like. What do you mean? I, I don't have a plan. I just, when I have something new to sell, I sell it, <laughs> right? And that's, that's okay, but I would rather you have a consistent rhythm of invitations and launches and offerings because your audience will get accustomed to that rhythm and it makes it easier to sell anything. Here's a secret here. Here's a, here's a quote unquote secret. If you only sell things on a random basis, you will probably feel salesy and your audience will feel like it's salesy and promotional. But if you sell on a consistent basis, that's not too often, but that's consistent, your audience will start to see, oh yeah, George Cow has a monthly, monthly course that he sells us. He has a yearly coaching program that he sells us. He has a, a book that he launches every six months. There you go. I just told you my 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 uh, my uh, launch rhythm. So I have a, a monthly course that I sell you. I have a yearly program that I launch, you know, in the fall of each year, group coaching, and then I have my my a new book or a re-edited book every six months that I launch. Uh, if I needed one-on-one -on -one clients, I would be making an invitation probably at least once a quarter to my email list, to my Facebook, you know, et cetera, to say, hey, I've got room for one-on-one -on -one clients. Uh, if you're interested, you know, I've got, I'm going to do, um, you know, 20 exploratory calls in the next 30 days, uh, sign up for one of the 20 if you're thinking about working with me, something like that. So what is your plan? What is your rhythm? What is your schedule for launching, making offers, uh, inviting your audience to take the next step with you? something for you to think through, okay? 
So, and then the fourth, the fourth uh, question, which I'll be honest, I've neglected the fourth question. And by making this video, by ma writing this blog post, I've, I'm kind of renewing myself with this fourth question. What is, what is your plan for connections? Some of you are actually quite good at it. Some of you go to regular networking events. Maybe you reach out to old colleagues, old clients, potential referral sources. Maybe you have some regular thing that you do. I haven't. I, I mean, I think in the past when I needed clients, I, I was definitely more regular with this stuff. But ever since I haven't needed to get any more clients in the past couple of years, I've dramatically lost my incentive and my rhythm of connection, you know, regular networking connections. And, and, and now I'm renewing it. And um, the way I'm renewing it now is I'm reframing it not as networking, but as net caring. Net caring. Now, I thought I came up with that, but I, I Googled it earlier. I'm like, oh, a bunch of people have <laughs> used the word net caring. So I didn't come up with it. But I didn't, I, I, I guess I came up with it independently with, with, uh, of others too. So net caring is the idea that we keep in touch with people not because we want something from them. Not because, oh, old client, you want to maybe sign up again? Old colleague, hey, here's what I'm up to. Maybe you can refer some business to me. Instead of networking, net caring is I reach out to old colleagues, old clients, um, potential colleagues, potential referral sources because I like them and because I care about them. That's it. So net caring is yet another uh, asp sphere of my business that I'm going to place no monetary, uh, not no monetary um, requirements on. Okay. So two two spheres of my business where there's no monetary requirements. Content in terms of regular content, not my paid courses you have to pay for, but my regular content, you know, weekly content is free, and then the net caring. Um, so uh, here's a simple plan that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing for one hour a week starting next month. Reach out to two previous clients to genuinely care because I like them. And when I say like them, this is really like when you're reaching out to someone because you like them, like you actually like them, it is such a different feeling than when you're reaching out trying to get something like ulterior motive. I hope you refer business to me. I like you. I like that. How, how do you remember that you like them? Think about some part of aspect of them that you like, you know, and um, I'm just call out the people who are commenting. I'll reach out to Shreta because she is she has a heart of gold. I really like that about her. She is such a incredibly great colleague to have and supportive of others. So if I reach out to her, that's what I'll remember. That's how that's the feeling I'll have as I reach out to her. Angela, she is. Um, has huge potential in terms of content and being a, a leader, um, especially for women in the workplace. And that's what I like about her. And so when I reach out, that's I'm like, yeah, that's what, that's where she shines. That's what, uh, you know, I'm seeing as, um, what I really appreciate about her presence in the world. You know, captain is just an amazing guy. He, um, Tons of potential, tons of wisdom in, in the sphere of relationships that I know about for sure. And so when I reach out to him, I'm, I'm going to think about that, you know. So it's like net caring is about reaching out to people because you like them and you, that's, that's the thing you're connecting with first. And just you enjoy their company. You enjoy them. And so you just wish them well in the world. And maybe, you, maybe I'll share some blog posts that I wrote recently that I think will be helpful for Shweta or helpful for Angela or helpful for Captain. And it's because I, I care about them, not because, oh, I hope they – you know, do something back for me, right? So reach out to two previous clients, step one. Step two, reach out to two potential referral sources um, because I like what they're doing on their Facebook page or on their blog or on their Twitter or whatever. It's like, hey, I really like that you're doing that. I just want to thank you for doing that. I want to introduce myself. If there's anything I can help with and any advice I can give you about my area of expertise, don't be shy of reaching out, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then third thing that I think I'm going to start trying out is commenting on popular posts where I can add value. And so on Facebook, if you look at Facebook, at the top of Facebook, there's a search box. And if you type in a keyword that you are a pro at, that you can add value to, right? So Shweta might type in a keyword on Ayurveda or holistic healing or something into the Facebook search and then click on posts and then look at the public posts and look at posts that have 
you know, dozens of comments, right? At least dozens of comments or at, at least 10 comments, a public post, 10 different people have commented. Then add, if it's something that you want to add value to, something like, you know, I, I have something to say about this, something that can benefit others, then, then comment there as a way to just bless and, and serve others as part of your ministry. So that's what I'm going to be doing anyway, um, going forward. So I'm going to do something on Facebook, something on LinkedIn, and something on Twitter. Um, all three areas are where you can comment on pop popular posts that are in your area of expertise. So uh, uh, anyway, those are the four questions. I think I'll end the video now. Let me summarize for you the four important questions to create a weekly action plan to grow your business. One is what is your content creation rhythm? Two is what is your content distribution plan? Three is what is your plan for launching offers, inviting your audience to work with you or to, to announce some aspect of your offerings? And four is what is your plan for connections? I hope this is helpful. Uh, comment below and let me know um, if you want to share any part of any of your answers to these four questions or all four. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Uh, thanks for those who were able to join me. Um, Captain, Yule, uh, Ludovic, Esther, uh, Angela, uh, Jean, Diana. Thank you so much for joining me live. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.